Elon Musk's XAI is apparently close to closing $6 billion of fundraising to build out Grok. Why are these numbers so huge and does it make sense in the larger context? That's what we're going to chat about. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. We kick off today with the news that Elon Musk's XAI is close to closing on $6 billion. Now, Elon, for his part, has been very circumspect about this fundraise. Rumors of it started months ago, but he denied them, said that they were not actively raising. However, the reality of the situation has been fairly open, and for a long time it appeared that the number was around $3 billion. Over the last couple of weeks, that seems to have doubled to a $6 billion raise on an $18 billion pre-money valuation, meaning that after the raise, the company would be valued at $24 billion. The information is putting a little more meat on this bone, citing two sources who are close to the deal. The additional information that they give us includes some of the folks who are investing. Sequoia Capital is one of the investors participating in this round which is notable because, as we've seen over and over again, a lot of the capital that has flown into the foundation model space has not been from traditional VC, but from big tech companies. The reason being, of course, that traditional venture funds don't have the ability to do two, three, four, five, six billion dollar rounds. However, for Elon and XAI, they obviously can't turn to a Microsoft or a Google when they're trying to beat Microsoft and Google. So it'll be interesting to see what exactly the full composition of this round ends up being. As the information points out, if this really does come together the way that it looks like it will, it will represent one of the largest single funding rounds among these foundation models, probably just behind the OpenAI Microsoft investment. Certainly, Elon Musk has not been cagey about the fact that they need more resources to compete. So far, Grok has released 1.5, and Elon has said that Grok 2 is coming, which is currently being trained on 20,000 NVIDIA H100s. However, earlier this month on a Twitter Spaces, Elon suggested that the company needs 100,000 GPUs to train Grok 3. So for what it's worth, this is a deal that I've been asked my opinion on a number of different times, especially from investors who are outside of the AI space. And so what I want to do today is kind of go through the logic that I've given, although to be clear, there's no financial advice here. It's just a way of looking at this. The TLDR on what I've said is that there are a very, very small number of companies that are legitimate competitors for the generalized foundation model space. And if that is a space that you want investment exposure to during these private days, you kind of got to pay what it's going to cost to play. So who are those companies? Well, of course, there's OpenAI. At this point, OpenAI is valued in the $100 billion range. And the most recent rounds have only been tender offers of employee shares, limiting how much is actually available. Point being that while it's not impossible that there will be future raises that investors can participate in, OpenAI is not the easiest company to get equity in right now. And even if you do, it's at a fairly significant premium. Anthropic has been raising left and right. In 2023, they raised $7.3 billion, which includes the $4 billion Amazon commitment, which was actually just finished earlier this year in 2024. One of the interesting things about that story was just how these astronomical sums have an impact of crowding out smaller investors. And by smaller investors, I'm not talking in normal Silicon Valley terms. Back in February, the Times wrote, even after raising billions from Amazon and Google, Anthropic knew it would eventually need more money. Generative AI startups are constantly updating, refining, and expanding their technology to make their product accurate, up-to-date, and more powerful. And that requires enormous amounts of expensive computational power. Finding new investors was easy for Anthropic, but many of those who were interested wanted to invest $10 million to $25 million, while the company aimed for a much larger sum. Basically, if you're trying to raise a billion dollars, do you want one or two companies who can do the entire amount? Or do you want 100 investors putting in $10 million each? From a sheer logistical and administrative perspective, obviously the fewer investors, the better. Now, when push came to shove, the way to accomplish what Anthropic was looking for, while also allowing smaller investors in, was to roll up all those smaller investors into a special purpose vehicle that was led by a single firm, in this case, Menlo Ventures. Anyway, again, the point of this for our story is that barging your way into that deal was also not trivial. Beyond OpenAI and Anthropic, who are the other realistic contenders in this space? Well, of course, there is Google with Gemini, but for exposure to that business, you just have to buy public stock at this point. Same goes with Meta and Llama. And Meta and Llama are throwing an entirely different wrench into this, which I'll come to in just a moment. One more credible competitor, which honestly kind of looks like a steal given everything that we've talked about so far, is Francis Mistral, which has exploded onto the scene over the last nine months or so. In December, the company raised at a $2 billion valuation, and earlier this month, it was reported that they were seeking funding at a $5 billion valuation. So that brings us back to Musk and OpenAI. So one part of the logic to participate in this deal is simply the fact that many people are looking for exposure into this space, and it's one of a very small handful of options. I will note at this point that there are a number of other really interesting global competitors in places like China that are not primarily English-based LLMs, 
But obviously, from a U.S. investor standpoint, which is going to inherently be the bias of this show given that I'm sitting in New York, these represent a fairly big portion of the going options in many ways. Now, let's come back and talk about Llama 3 for a minute, because I think that the emergence of Llama 3 actually works in Musk's favor when it comes to demand for and the price of XAI. One of the big things that we've talked about on this show over the last couple of weeks is the extent to which how close Llama 3 is getting to GPT-4 is changing the way that developers think about access to models. Basically, I think that people are starting to wonder, will state-of-the-art models just simply become a commodity? Or perhaps more acutely, will Zuckerberg be willing to spend enough to force them to become a commodity by giving away Llama 4, Llama 5, etc.? The answer increasingly appears to be maybe, which I think creates a real challenge for the Anthropics and OpenAIs of the world, who potentially are going to have a harder and harder time with their enterprise models when they're competing with lower cost open source options. Now that's not to count them out at all, there's a million other dynamics which could still matter, and there are futures in state of the art which could still create massive differentiation, which continues to command a premium on price. But in a world where there is more commoditization, let's say, of highly advanced models, it sort of makes companies that have an existing distribution platform, a business model that these AIs plug into, look even better by comparison. An example of this is the new meta AI that sits at the top of Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger. When Llama 3 came out, they didn't just release it as a standalone chatbot, they embedded it directly in their three very popular messaging apps in a way that totally synced it up with search. It's early days, but I think dramatically more people are going to use it based on those product decisions and actually have a positive experience with it. Which brings us back to XAI. So if reason one to participate in this type of round is simply the lack of availability and the scarcity of rounds like this, another reason might be a bet on the integration with Twitter slash X. Even if Grok isn't state-of-the-art in anything else, the fact that it is embedded in this larger network, that despite all the hemming and hawing about Musk's leadership, is still one of the very small handful of very important social networks in the US and around the world, that creates more of an opportunity for Grok to add value to consumers and potentially plug into existing business models than perhaps the standalones like OpenAI and Anthropic. Now, of course, we don't know how any of this is going to play out. We don't know how much the distance between state-of-the-art and open-source alternatives will matter. My point is simply that as big and eye-popping as these numbers seem, they're a lot less crazy than you might think once you really dig in. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.